In the past few years, I'm sure you've seen Uniqlo's collabs with just about every major shonen from Dragon Ball Z to One Piece, or been to Urban Outfitters and seen just about everything else in between. It's one of many signifiers that anime has been fully integrated into the mainstream and obviously into fashion as well. And there are a lot of reasons for fashion trends to catch on, from materialism to necessity, to being Brad Pitt in a new relationship. So let's break down some of the reasons anime fashion is the new regular fashion. As the world descends deeper into chaos, we've seen the capitalist machine quickly embrace surgical mask culture, but if you've ever been to an anime convention, you probably saw that coming the second the words airborne infectious disease came up on the news. I don't want this video to be all about our looming downfall, but let's dwell on that for just a little bit. The surgical face mask as we now know it was invented in the late 19th century and has come in and out of style as the world has come in and out of imminent peril. To slow the spread of the pneumonic plague in 1910, then the Spanish flu in 1918, and MERS in 2002, and of course way before any of that there were those super ornate apothecary masks you've probably seen in Assassin's Creed or the most recent season of My Hero Academia. And they weren't just to avoid germs. In 1923, masks helped protect against smoke and ash in the air after the Great Kanto Earthquake, and they were adopted again in the 1950s to protect against new pollutants that emerged as a result of Japan's rapid industrialization. But all this is to say that fashion happens for a lot of reasons, one of which is utility. In short, you gotta cover your so you wear pants and underwear to protect your dick from those pants which are somehow sharp. But surely there's a reason why you would choose anime underwear over plain whites and maybe we'll figure out why that is today. Now I did a lot of googling and found surprisingly little concrete research on why we wear the stuff we wear, but the most obvious fundamental reason is to signify that we're part of a culture, movement, or way of thinking, or that we're Brad Pitt transitioning from Gwyneth Paltrow to Jennifer Aniston. Boom! Got him again! Suck my dick, you beautiful man! In times of crisis, face masks provide some protection from sickness, but more more than that, they also help to signal to people around you that you're aware of what's going on and you care about keeping yourself and the people around you healthy. Or if you're the type of person who wears a mask just under the nose, they provide a perfect place to collect virus particles directly below your breathing holes. Clothes signify anything from cultural or political allegiance to what you do for work, the things you find important, etc. People carry purses and satchels because they think it's important to have storage, but also to wear tight pants. And people wear Goku t-shirts to the gym to signify that they don't watch anime but can bust your and head open. You get it. So to break down how, or at least how I think, anime became a major trend in fashion, I think it might help to start by looking at fashion trends here and in Japan throughout the years. Before the 1600s, before you ask, I don't know why I'm going back this far either, I just think it's interesting. But before the 1600s, Japanese fashion was pretty simple and traditional, relatively untouched by outside influence. The kimono was introduced in the Heian period, and as is the case with most things, it was mostly rich nobles wearing them, until things started to loosen up in the Edo period from 1603 to 1868. Money found its way into the lower merchant class, and on top of that, easier manufacturing made clothes more accessible, which meant nobles had to find other ways to demean their subjects. For a visual reference, Edo is the period of samurai shampoo, where you can see there isn't a huge gap in clothing quality for the rich and poor. Up next, the Meiji era was the first look at an industrialized Japan that accepted influence from the West. This is when Japan started to take on more westernized, militaristic fashion, including the famous school uniforms or seifuku that you see in anime like Yu Yu Hakusho and kinda in Kill la Kill. These are the Gakuran and Sailor Fuku respectively, and if you watch a lot of anime, you've probably seen plenty of dudes in the former prey on girls in the latter. The Meiji period is the time of Rurouni Kenshin, of which we do not speak, so therefore I do not have a visual reference for Japan in this time, I'm sorry. Likewise, Europe and the US were captivated by Japanese art and culture, marking the beginning of a cultural exchange that continues to this day, and that we are ultimately the product of. The Taisho era, the era of Demon Slayer only lasted 14 years from 1912 to 1926, so there isn't really much to say about it, except that it expanded upon the adoption of European style while still maintaining its Japanese identity. You may have noticed Kabutsuji Muzan's wife looks like a Japanese Mary Poppins, while Muzan himself dresses like either smooth criminal Michael Jackson or late stage Jack White, depending who you ask, and the Demon Slayers themselves wear the aforementioned Gakuran with traditional Hakama pants and Haori. Japan really started to take on American and European style in the Showa era from 1926 to 1989, especially when young people in the post-war period started to embrace popular culture, which meant taking fashion notes from Western musicians like the Beatles, Jimi Hendrix, Eric Clapton and Cream, those weird hair metal bands about whom I refuse to learn, but you get the idea. In this period, traditional Japanese dress was relegated to special occasions while Western clothing went mainstream. Our visual reference here is Showa Genroku Rakugo Shinju. Japanese designers were also making waves in the West in this period. Fashion giant Kenzo Takada 
Mehta debuted his first collection in Paris in 1970, and around the same time, the visionary designer Issei Miyake moved to New York. Over the next decade, Japanese designers became known for their innovative, imaginative designs. And now modern times. The Heisei period led us from January 8th, 1989 to April 30th, 2019, with the abdication of Emperor Akihito, and it's the era when Japan solidified its current status as the street fashion capital of the world. For the sake of my upcoming argument, I'll say the visual reference for this era is Masaki Yuasa's Devilman Crybaby, and if you disagree with me, here's literally any picture of Ryo Asuka. I'm emphasizing Devilman's importance because the 90s especially saw the synergy between fashion and pop culture grow, with Japan even having its own grunge era to reflect the one in the US, and as you may have noticed, Devilman uses hip-hop as a storytelling device, which I think is both dope and very important, but back to that in a second. Madonna's infamous video for Nothing Really Matters featured a bright red kimono as reimagined by Jean-Paul Gaultier and later by nearly every contestant on season 8 of RuPaul's Drag Race, but another pop star would build an entire brand on cultural appropriation. You might be familiar with a certain style of fashion out of this time period that unfortunately came into the Western consciousness as a human decoration for Gwen Stefani music videos. The Harajuku girls represent the nexus of fashion and pop culture, and also the fact that people really love it when white women like stuff. But on the other side of that, quite literally, the Urahara era represented the other side of Japan's Harajuku district, which is home to a lot of hugely popular streetwear brands, most notably Bape, short for a bathing ape, but absolutely no one has time to call it that. So Bape. Bape was founded in 1993 by DJ and fashion designer Nigo, who cites some of his influences as Elvis, The Beatles, The BC Boys, and Run DMC, which is important because Run DMC represent the beginnings of an era of hip hop as a brand ambassador. In 2020, fashion shoutouts run so deep you don't even think about them anymore, from Kanye adopting the title of Louis Vuitton Don, Frank Ocean dropping a song with Migos about Rap Simmons, and singing the lyrics Hide My Tattoos in Shibuya, or there's also the fact that Gucci Mane is one of the most prolific rappers of all time, both in and out of prison. But Run DMC started that whole trend when they realized they were generating a shitload of business for Adidas with their tracksuits and shell toes and wrote a three minute sneaker commercial called My Adidas. That was in 1986, and hip hop has embraced very conspicuous shout outs to fashion brands ever since. From 1993, Japanese street fashion really leaned into the hip hop aesthetic, spawning their own b-boy era in 1997, which incidentally is the same year Toonami went live on Cartoon Network. Now, maybe I'm crazy, but I'd say with those coinciding cross-cultural explosions, it stands to reason that there will be a resulting snowball effect in the fashion industry, as shows featured on Toonami, most notably Sailor Moon, reflected the street fashion that already existed in Tokyo, and literally every rapper took note. Kanye West and Logic have been cited in videos across YouTube as fans of Akira, with Kanye recreating Tetsuo's hospital escape for his stronger music video in 2007, and 10 years later, fans, including the two rappers, got to see a collab between between Supreme and Akira that, for me, raises the question of whether the recent boom in anime fashion is really indicative of a bump in quality or just a bump in brand recognition. I'm not saying the collection is bad, because I do want to keep myself open for sponsorships, but if you're looking for super well-integrated designs, that's not really what you're getting here. If you've been an anime fan as long as I have, you'll remember there is a long, long tradition of fans making their own merch, which includes fan-made clothing like screen-printed t-shirts, which means there is also a long tradition of anime fans dressing, for a lack of a better phrase, like when there was little to no interest in anime in the greater zeitgeist, the weight of the anime fashion industry was thanklessly carried by a familiar presence in malls across America, Hot Topic, which we can thank at least in part for a familiar presence at Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments across America, that one black kid that always wore an Invader Zim t-shirt under an open button down with the flames on it, and always, always wore a do-rag with the flap blowing in the breeze and those weird oval sunglasses. Just tiny oval sunglasses. It was one of many uniforms that signified membership to the Blurred community that thankfully I never adopted. You don't want those oval sunglasses? I don't want, I, you know what, I did have the sunglasses. I picture I got them at Burger King when they were doing the uh, Wild Wild West promotion. They're the ones Will Smith wore in the movie. But to backtrack a bit, 1998 saw an economic downturn in Japan that opened the door for Western streetwear brands to set up shop in Tokyo and beyond, with Stussy and Huff taking part and Supreme, the streetwear Walmart, opening what would become six of its 12 stores in Japan. In Daikanyama, Osaka, Fukuoka, 
Harajuku, Nagoya, and Shibuya, and this Western streetwear boom would pave the way for fast fashion department stores like H&M, as well as other fashion brands like the name you've probably been itching to hear again, Uniqlo. And in the years since, we've seen rappers express their love for anime more openly, and some get more explicitly involved in fashion, with Kanye being closely associated with Nigo, and Nigo being a co-founder of Billionaire Boys Club with none other than Pharrell Williams. And both of those rapper producers having sneaker lines with Adidas, who in case you forgot, got in at the ground floor of rapper fashion collabs with Run DMC in 86, and are now contributing to the wave of anime fashion with their recent line of Dragon Ball Z sneakers. And also, by the way, Nigo was the creative director of Uniqlo's UT division until recently, in many ways making him the architect of the modern anime wave in street fashion, and he may not directly be the architect of Uniqlo's new Evangelion collab, but I obviously had to mention it considering the name of our channel is a shameless reference to Evangelion, just as this is a shameless plug. And beyond Nigo, we've seen anime make it to more traditional high fashion outlets with Prada designing clothes for Appleseed X Machina and dressing the cast of Final Fantasy XIII-2 for their 25th anniversary, while the game's main character Lightning fronted Louis Vuitton's Series 4 campaign in 2015. And we've also seen Goku and Vegeta wear something other than orange training gear and battle armor for what feels like the first time since Goku trained on Yardrat, and of course those jackets ended up getting a real life release by Toei and X-Large. I feel like I'm only scratching the surface here considering there have also been less pretentious collabs between Vans and Jodra's Bizarre Adventure, Naruto and Adidas, Converse and Hello Kitty, Uniqlo and Sailor Moon, but with the endless feedback loop of rappers who grew up in the Toonami era rapping about anime and fashion, Lil Uzi piercing his face to look like pain, and fashion brands struggling to stay on top of what their clientele is interested in, I think we've got a lot more Akira collabs and $800 Naruto jackets in our future. So, I don't know why I brought up masks in the beginning, but we all say irrelevant sometimes, so I don't know what to tell you. I'm sorry. I guess ultimately it's because they've been a part of the otaku aesthetic for years now and have kind of been the last holdout in anime's transition into the fashion mainstream. And now that they're finally here, it's by virtue of the world ending. And yet fashion designers are taking note and building up face masks as the next must-have accessory, although Ao and Teo might justifiably argue that they are way ahead of the curve on this one. The point is, as anime and places where anime is celebrated sit more firmly in the mainstream, I think we can expect anime fans to find their way into all popular fields from fashion to film and music, and that sensibility to continue to be reflected in their work, and no matter what, we can expect to keep getting ads for those Gundam shoes on Instagram. I'm your host, Yudoye, and if you want to see a deeper dive into the link between hip-hop and anime, don't bother commenting because I'm writing that video whether you want it or not. I will be talking about Megan Thee Stallion in depth, but for now, a few words. 12. Defund and abolish the police force. Rest in peace, George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, Tony McDade, Nina Pop, David McAtee, and far too many more. There are links below to inform yourself on everything that's going on in the country and initiatives that you can donate to, even though I know a lot of you are children. Thank you for watching Get in the Robot, made in New York, because we got a Supreme store here too.